Robert Iger was supposed to fix it. People were supposed to fall in love with Disney again. Disney Plus was supposed to be soaring to new heights and job cuts. Well, job cuts? It's Robert Iger. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. Uh, we have a problem. Well, a warm welcome to all of you out there. I'm so happy that you've decided to join. Explaining entertainment, keeping you ahead of the culture curve. It's what we're going to do yet again today. Now, I had planned to have Jonas J. Campbell and Valiant Renegade join in this video today. However, we've had a slight change of plans. That being that in the member live stream last night, we had a bit of a disagreement. And we have decided actually that Going forward, perhaps we are going to go our separate ways. And so that is, uh, that's no fun for sure. But uh, April Fools, ladies and gentlemen, April Fools. Wouldn't the mainstream love if that were the case? But no, we have never been in any greater harmony, that being myself, Valiant Renegade, and Jonas. There was no trouble whatsoever at the member stream last night. It was a huge celebration. And I uh, encourage all of you to go watch the interview that I did with Valiant Renegade last evening, and Jonas continues to be the excellent uh, investigative reporter for that part place and producer for the pro show. Sorry if I caused any of you distress, but it is April Fool's and I had to do it. Now, one thing that is not April Fool's at all, one thing that's no joking matter is that it does appear, and again, we're not, we're not joking on this one, that Disney Plus is failing. Now, not failing in the way that it's going to go under, not failing in the way that Disney will give up on it. It has 160 million subscribers, and so Disney's not going to abandon it, but failing in that it originally was supposed to be a competitor with Netflix. It was really supposed to give Netflix a run for its money, and now that is no longer, in my opinion, the case. We are going to take a look at several articles today, go deeper than the rest of the media is likely to go, and explain why Disney Plus is becoming a failure for Disney for what its original intent was meant to be. We are going to be starting with an older article, but we have to to set the context here. This one out of CNBC by Sarah Whitten, uh, published January 19th. Netflix blows away expectations on subscriber numbers. Here's the key point that you need to know. Netflix added 7.66 million paid subscribers during the fourth quarter more than the 4.57 million Wall Street expected. This is also, or it was also, the first quarter that Netflix's ad tier uh, was reflected in the earnings. And so, again, this is back in January. We don't yet know what the next quarter will look like for Netflix, although we can presume that it's going to be good. And one thing that we should all notice about Netflix is that they have made a significant turnaround. You might recall that it was not so long ago, in fact, it was last year, that Netflix had had its stock drop significantly. And it was just recently, not very long ago, that Netflix had found itself in the middle of a major controversy. That being that they had created a movie that was about something potentially inappropriate involving people of an age where that's really inappropriate. But here's the thing about that. Netflix seems to have learned a lesson that Disney has not yet learned. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. But clearly, Netflix has, has turned a corner. Look at that. 7.66 million paid subscribers being added to the roster for Netflix. And that's especially good considering now we have so much of that ad revenue being driven uh, by this new tier that Netflix has introduced. and when we come to the Nielsen numbers in just a moment, we'll be looking at how well Netflix is performing in terms of its top content. That now matters more than ever as these streaming platforms are seeking to make ad revenue off of hot properties. Netflix, some might say, had reached a point of saturation in the market, but that isn't the case. Look at this. Netflix, as of the beginning of this year, 2023, according to Demand Sage, has reached 230 million subscribers, almost 231 million subscribers. It is preferred by 47% of Americans over other streaming platforms. When you consider that Netflix is facing a multitude, a multiplicity of other streaming platforms, 
Well, it would seem then that Netflix is probably in the lead there. And of course, it has a huge catalog of resources. All of that majorly important, but you didn't click here to find about how well Netflix is doing, right? You came here because I said that Disney Plus is actually failing. And failing, remember in context, to keep that appropriate, failing to reach Netflix, which was the original intent of Disney. They don't want to play second fiddle. Disney for so long was the top dog at the box office. Well, that's no longer the case, but it's also the case that they are dropping in the streaming market as well. Look at this. This is a this is from quarter one of 2020 until the most recent quarter, right? Q1 of 2023 for Disney Plus subscribers worldwide. This from uh, Statista.com. And as you can see, Disney had tremendous growth, especially during the times when people were locked in their houses for reasons that they could not control. However, for the very first time, Disney actually lost subscribers in the most recent quarter. Now, some people out there will say, uh, and some people that I greatly re respect will say, that, oh, well, that's no big deal because those subscription losses come from India. They come from Hotstar, and they come from uh, a, a complex situation dealing with sports that are popular in India and not popular uh, in the United States. Well, there's a, there's an issue that I take with that. And that is that this drop here that you see, right? 164.2 million to 161.8 million. Had there been any growth in North America of any significance during that same time, it would have offset those losses. However, that did not happen. And as a result, because the North American subscriber numbers were stagnant, Disney had a major loss for Disney+. Plus. At the same time, and this is this is the big thing, folks. At the same time that Netflix was growing by seven million, Disney was dropping by millions. That is not a recipe for catching up. All right, now we're moving on to an article that is closer, and we're going to get to something very close in just a moment. This from the uh, from February eighth, out of Variety by Todd Spangler. Disney Plus drops the two point four million subscribers and first loss. Bob Iger heralds significant transformation underway. We talked about this, right? However, what I do want to bring to your attention is just how much Disney is losing uh, currently in the situation they have. Disney's direct-to-consumer revenue for the quarter rose 13% to $5.3 billion. Okay, went up. While its operating loss, its operating loss, folks, increased 78% to $1.05 billion in a single quarter more than a billion dollars in a single quarter. Now that was better than what analysts thought it was going to be and good for them, right? That was $1.5 billion in the previous quarter that was lost. But all of this seems to be driven by Disney Plus not being able to turn a profit. And it's going to be a very long time before it does. To give you some perspective, that amount of money that Disney is losing on Disney Plus is something akin to the cost of an entire cruise ship it's as if an entire cruise ship is sinking to the bottom of the ocean, figuratively, when we're talking about this financial situation for Disney, each and every quarter. That is unsustainable. And so what I want you to see when we're looking at the, st the statistics here is that at the same time that Disney is taking that sort of a loss, Disney is shrinking. Disney Plus must grow in order to succeed. It must grow in order to stop this hemorrhaging of financial losses, but it's not growing. And so if you're wondering, why is Disney cutting the cadence of content? Why are they cutting programming? Why are they slashing budgets? Why are they firing 7,000 people? Why are they doing desperate measures to try to save their uh, sovereignty or their self-governance in Central Florida, which, by the way, has a value in the billions of dollars over the next decades, just in case you wonder why they're pulling that number. Well, it's because if Disney Plus shrinks and it does not grow in the way that they need it to, then there is very little escape from the hurt that Disney is in. Now, we talked about this at the live show, and we'll have another video out this weekend on this issue. That being that the indicators are that folks are checking out of Disney Plus. These are the Nielsen ratings for the most recent week we have. It's the same week that The Mandalorian debuted. We're not going to retread this uh, terribly, and you probably have all heard about how The Mandalorian really, 
really underperformed what Disney needs it to do. It is supposed to be the premier show on all of Disney Plus. At least that's what it was. It was the show that drove Disney Plus and subscribers. It it convinced Star Wars fans that maybe there was a maybe there was a chance out there that the sequel trilogy was not in fact the end of it. Perhaps they could get their Star Wars fix and and see something that was akin to George Lucas' original vision. Well, the problem with that is what we know that's not going to happen now. And as that continues and as the drama surrounding Star Wars and the narrative failures continue to pile up, the viewership is going down. The Mandalorian, in its premiere episode of season three, was beaten by NCIS. It was beaten by The Last of Us. It was beaten by Outer Banks. It was almost beaten by We Have a Ghost. There's no way that The Mandalorian is any longer a cultural phenomenon especially when your premiere episode is supposed to be the one that brings in all that binge watching as people prepare to watch that very first episode. Now, I recommend that all of you go to the Valiant Renegade video where he covers exactly why this is so bad and breaks down how The Mandalorian actually had additional days compared to some other properties that show that this really, this number is not good. But I'm more keen to show you something else. There was a time six months to a year ago when Disney Plus was all over the movie section. In fact, if we go back 12 months, Disney had far fewer subscribers, yet yet Disney controlled all of the top 10 movies, according to Nielsen, because kids would sit there and be babysat by those films. You would see this covered up in Disney movies. That is no longer the case. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is dropping precipitously. Moana continues to hang on somehow. Families love that movie. It has been around now for years and years. But there are no turning reds. There are no Encantos. No light years. There are no Lucas, Souls, nothing. All of those movies have disappeared from the top ten. The Minions are there. Megan is there. Even The Hunger Games is there. But Disney has vacated the top 10 movies. And that matters because that means that the ad tier for Disney Plus is probably not where it should be. We'll be finding that out very shortly as Disney comes with their next earnings report and with the new numbers. Perhaps they'll blow us all away and I will have to do a new video and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. They pulled a rabbit out of their hat. You just, you won't believe the numbers. How did they do this? But I, I might not. And we might be in this same situation or worse. The reason this matters is if you look at Variety, this one from February 23rd by Jennifer Moss, Warner Brothers Discovery tops 96 million streaming subscribers across HBO, HBO Max, and Discovery+. Plus. This article is all about HBO Max growing. The other streaming services seem to be growing. They're catching up now with Disney+, Plus as families and consumers decide that Disney is too divisive or divisive. And so, here's the problem for Disney. They have lost what was a solid second tier. They wanted to be top tier with Netflix. But now, they're not even really the second tier anymore. If we go back and look at these top, uh, top tens out of Nielsen, guess what we begin to see? Netflix, Peacock. Look over here at, uh, at the acquired shows filled with HBO Max. How about that? That's as a result of Disney losing the interest of consumers, and now what were the third tier platforms? They're catching up, they're drawing even, and it's going to be a big deal. Disney Plus has essentially vacated its spot at the top, at least in terms of who could have taken on Netflix. And given that the whole business model was shaped around that idea that Disney could compete, now that we're finding out that it really can't, we're going to have to wait and see how long is it until Disney learns the hard lesson that Netflix already acquired. Because it did. And we'll find out, I guess, in about a week. Folks, if you like content like this, make sure you click the like button, share, subscribe, and that notification bell, you can click it and stick it to the algorithms. If you don't mind, we would love to hear your comments. We care about what you think. 
want to know what you out there have to say. So drop a comment down below the pro show Thursdays, 5 to 7 p.m. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Make sure to catch the pro show Thursdays, 5 to 7 Eastern Time. Entertainment Explained, The Culture Curve Conquered, live with Pro and all his friends.